Strat. Hello. Push Pop is cruising. She's been out for a while. She's going. She's going. Bye. Apple 1822 just resubscribed for two months. Thank you. Hello. Candace Core Peppermint just resubscribed for 22 months. Thank Alpha you. Is, hey. She's going. She's going. All right, chat. So here's the uh, here's the plan. Um, Polly, do you want to? I guess Polly can come out. All right. All right, chat. This is the plan. Oh, where'd you go? Huh? What? What? The plan is we're going to go down to the pasture. Somebody says, hi, master's degree, Lindsay. Well, thank you. Um, master Lindsay for short. How long does she like to roam? Uh, we usually try to let her out for uh, at least an hour every day. Uh, sometimes we find her and she's just kind of, she's kind of pooped out. Like she's just flat and her legs are behind her and she's, she's done. Um, but I like to get her out for as long as she'll go because because when she's in her small enclosure, she doesn't have room to go anywhere, and that makes me sad, so. Oops. Hello, sweetie. Um, we're going to go down to the pasture first uh, and do a couple, do some, Ella's going to do some work down there with Serrano. Woo, I stood up too fast. Anyway, Are we're going to do, huh? You mean lunch? All right, a little bit of a snack. Um. We are going to go do that first, and then we're going to come back up to the nut house, and we are going to paint with push pop. And then maybe we're also going to paint with Polly. She's in there. We can't let her out at the same time that push pops out because if she poops, push pop tries to eat it, and it's gross. Push pop, push pop usually eats it. Um. Are you guys still training Stompy to go into his stall? I haven't done work with Stompy in his stall in a little while. Serrano's been going in the stall. Serrano's been going in the stall. Uh, funny thing about Stompy's stall is the reason we got it was uh, for cold weather, specifically freezing rain. Mm -hmm. uh, and naturally, because we have it now, um, <laughs> it, it didn't happen this year. No. Fun. Uh, but we will continue to work on that. All right, shall we go to the pasture? And then we'll come back up and paint. Mm -hmm. That's the plan for the stream today, guys. Pasture, push pot painting, poly painting, and stream. The foxes did some painting today, chat. Look at that. This is Finn, this is Reed. Look at that. Reed tried to take the painting stuff. Did As he does. He didn't. That's why there is dirt on Reed. This is Abbott. Beautiful. This is Moomin. The Moomin gave one print today. <laughs> Minimalist. But um, and then this was this one Abbott did last week um, on Saturday for me. It's probably one of my favorite ones. I don't know why I like it so much. It's really pretty. I also. I, I just like, really like this one. It's like an abstract. Like it's really, I think it's my favorite one. I really do. And now that I've shown it, I have to give it up, so. And then these are George. Or you could just make another one with the same colors. George. Yeah, that's not going to look the same. Right, but you take the original. Okay. George. Beautiful. I would like to make another one for George for myself. We need to get more. Right. We do. We do. Maybe we should do that. Abbott did great on Saturday. Uh, all right, so shall we go do a donkey session and then come back for a push pop? Mm -hmm. 
There she is. She's cruising. We tried a different uh, technique with George this year, and we tried, like, overlapping some of the colors and um, putting some water on the canvas first. You'll see it. We'll use the same. Uh, we put little. Um, we'll put a layer of water on this before we put paint on it for push pop so that the colors, like, disperse a little better. Whoop, push pop. How is in the way? Uh, I ordered all the food. Thank you. There was something else I was going to tell you to order. And the, the egg thing. There was something else. Think of it, text me. All right. I'm bad at this. Anyway, let's go. Um, Stompy has not done any paintings yet. Oh. His plates aren't covered. You're going down, chat. All good. They're staring at the ground for now. Staring at the ground, staring at the ground, staring at the ground, staring at the ground. Oops. The goats are not unleashed today because Connor's going to be operating the rock uh, momentarily. What? Yes. Very much so. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. You guys didn't say you couldn't hear me. I should probably put a lab on, huh? Didn't see any of the ocelot enclosure. It's such a bummer. All right. Ella, do you want to put on the lav since you're going to be with Serrano? Take him in the stall. All right, that's on. Confident. Hello. It's not an ocelot. It's not. It's not. It's not. I told you all. It's Winston. It's not. There's the rock saw. Winston the polar bear. Can you all hear me? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not an ocelot. <laughs> Ocelots don't have eight legs. That was the hint Maya gave him today. Eight legs. The total number of legs is going to be eight. Thank you for clarifying. Oh, we got a rolling donkey. Oh, cute. Oh, he loves the sand. He does. I didn't know the panels were here. I'll come down and say hi to everybody real quick. It's a kangaroo. It. Um, I don't know. Hopefully, Nick can make it soon. He didn't text me back, but since he's coming back eh. today. Connor confirmed for me last night that it is Winston. Did he didn't want to dig trenches in the enclosure. Is that one animal eight legs or two animals eight legs? Four more stompies. I'm still not convinced they're not stompies. I want to hug that dog so bad. We are narrowing it down. Eight one-legged creatures. <laughs> a second vacation enclosure for Finn and Reed. Guys, I would love for Finn and Reed to have a bigger enclosure. Maybe someday. I would love it. I would love for everybody to have bigger enclosures. It's just, it's just, it would, it would be nice. One bear, one wolf. Imagine. My gosh. I've heard a lot of stories about bears recently on the podcast that I've been listening mm -hmm. to, and I'm good. National Park After Dark? Yeah. There are a lot of bear attack episodes. A lot. A lot. Then you don't want to listen to Tooth and Claw. I'm not there yet. Do the foxes like playing with toys? Um, they like they do. Toys. Uh, yeah. We just have to be careful. What is that? Lettuce? What's that for? Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, we're doing a thing with Winnie today as well, chat. Spoiled today, you are. The grain bits? Yeah. Do we have paint? Do we bring it down? Mm -hmm. oh. Did I bring paint? It's only my favorite thing to do during the year. Lindsay loves paint. 
Remarkable. The parrots are going to paint next week on chat. They're probably going to finish the paintings that they've started next week, uh, next Tuesday. That's the plan. You guys can't get painting sessions with everybody in one day. Sorry. Nope. We would lose our minds. Nope. <laughs> the amount of sponges and dishes. What you doing, Siren? Oh. I love you. Colors. We can do two colors. Five colors. Chat, what color do you want Winnie's background? What, what do you want Winnie's painting to be? What's her favorite color? What's Winnie's favorite color? Is Winnie... Green. What's the color of green? Green. Green and brown. Or you just take all the colors and mix them until they're brown. Somebody said green and somebody said pink. Those were the first two colors. Okay. okay. So, green. green and pink. Green and pink. Oh, but did green and pink today. Can I have an essence of green? Because we're running low on green. That's fine. Hi, Tico. Can mix Hi, white Miley. with it? Do we have the white? Oh, I don't know. Uh -uh. If we have the white, it would just make the green go a little bit further. Hello, Miss Ma'am. Be nice to her. Do not. Do not. Do not. Yeah, I see you. All right. We'll be back, kids. All right, we're going. Oh, sorry, that was aggressive. All right. I feel that way every time I close that door. I, I always like am so slow with this. Chickens! Thing. Yeah, I can't pet Mia if Siren's too close because then it gets dramatic. That's why I did not pet Mia just then, chat. Siren was too close. Too close. That's how you lose a finger. I just. So you make one jealous bird. They're just, they're a lot. See a full bag of hay there. I'm That's shocked. A couple, yeah. I have a full bag. I'm shocked. Move. Nobody's hungry. I'm sorry you're not going out right now. Hello, cutie. You're always in the way. No. I don't need to lock that. Uh, Stompy was a lot on Sunday. Stompy would not leave Winnie alone. There he is. Cruising. Cruising. And so bigger gates. Ooh. I dunk. Oh, almost fell. Look at these donkeys. Are you itchy? You got some flies? We can fix that. Hi, mm. sir. Hi. So many, do you guys see all the flies around Serrano's legs? I sprayed them this morning. He needs to get another spray this afternoon. Even the, even the, they're even bugging jalapeno. Do you see his leg? I right, glue coated one of his legs and he had a lot of feelings about it, so we haven't done the other one. Do you guys see? Hi, buddy. Hi. Do you guys see? Hi, the boys. Hi, the boys. Hi, the boys. Can I scratch? And then get a scratch. Serrano likes the nice scratches too. Let's see if he'll accept some scratches. His legs are twitching from the flies. He's listening. He knows hell is coming. These are his favorite scratches down here, chat. You're gonna get like real. You got, you got some, sir. And he likes ear scratches as well, but his legs are real. They give us a hard time. Do you guys see the flies around me? Hi, sweet boy. Hi. 
Hej. Det er faktisk bare ordentligt. Ja, jeg er også gerne tænke. Sir? How are we? You doing okay? My goodness. Can you put something over their legs while you also have the spray on their legs? Um, so we, hopefully, in the future, <laughs> would like to wrap his legs, I think. Yeah, just an, uh, probably long enough to let him heal completely. Yes. I don't think they've ever, like, fully healed. But um, spray. they are not comfortable enough yeah. to allow us no. to wrap their legs. That'd be, right we'd now. have to hold on to their legs so hard. Yeah. Uh, it would be a lot for them, but we are working up to it. So right now, the Good. protocol for both of them is the purple on Serrano's legs is called Blue Coat. Uh, it just keeps everything clean. And then the fly spray that Ella currently has um, is uh, just a spray. Discourage flies. They don't like it. It also kills them, which is nice. It does kill them, which is extremely satisfying. If you get a bunch of them dead on, yeah. they just die. When okay, jalapeno is having trouble, you know the flies are bad. Yeah. That's how you know they're bad. And he's definitely got a lot going on over there. Yes, permethrin. Ooh. It's very windy today, uh, which means that jalapeno is going to be a little bit less comfortable, inevitably. That one's worse. The flies are actually a nightmare trap. They are the worst. Okay. Hey. You guys a decent view. Why do flies like Serrano's legs? That's a great question. He definitely is the one who we have the biggest issue with. He is might that... have, like, the only thing I can think of is he has an allergy to fly bites. So when he gets bit, it just he itches until he's bleeding, he so it just, bleeds. yeah, it's yeah, a vicious it cycle of him continually. Getting animals to accept small discomfort to avoid really bigger ones is so tough. Yeah, that's one of the, I think that's one of the things that made Serrano spray. Um, why it's taken us, I think, so long for him to be so comfortable because spray. with jalapeno, we had the luxury of getting him used to a spray before his legs were, yeah, really bad, really bad spray. Um, but Serrano, we were not lucky. Uh, so we were spraying once his legs were already a little bit raw, which inevitably, I mean, it can't feel good. Um, which means that... Who asked? Not me. Um, like, um, whoever just said that, we had to get him to accept that it was going to be uncomfortable. So it was not going to be a positive experience straight out of the gate um, in order to provide some relief for the flies. Spray. Uh, Ella's mic might, 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 might be cutting in and out because I'm standing a little further away from her. Yeah, it's also windy. Yeah, it's also windy. You got stuff on you. Okay, touch. Hi, buddy. I think Serana is starting to understand that the fly spray helps, though, yeah. if that is at all possible because I feel like it was an overnight difference. Like one day I went and put fly spray on him and it was impossible. Legs. Yeah, I was looking at this. Do we need to change directions so that you're spraying with the wind instead of against it? No, I've got them both. The flies are just, they're not really landing for very long anymore. I think I got them good enough. Hey, sorry. Oh, goodness. Zesty boys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got both your legs. I did. Got sprayed as well. Hi. How you doing? Da boop. Boop. <laughs> You've been booped, trap. <laughs> How often do you have to spray? We spray twice a day. Um, so I actually put blue coat on Serrano this morning. Uh, and I did the fly spray, and then Ella just reapplied um, the fly spray as well. 
was windy. She's to snacks. What's the plan? Whatever you want. Stream. Whatever I want. Okay. Whatever you want. I've been taking Serrano down to the feed stall, but that might be, or not the feed stall, the no. stompy stall. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to work with him in secluded. Uh, so what kind of training will you do with the round pendula? Um, it would, we would be able to progress in halter and leading training um, because he doesn't have as far to go if he were to get away. So I can recover him much quicker and it will be less of a, you know, scary. It will be less of a traumatic experience. Yeah. It will also be safer for everybody. Significantly um, safer. Because if he is attached to a lead rope or something. Yeah. Thank you for resubscribing. Um, if there is a lead rope involved, um, if if you were to, oh, <laughs> yeah, you were stompy. Step on um, it. It's a space that won't have any obstacles, so that we don't have to worry about him getting caught up somewhere. Thus, also making the heart, uh, halter and lead uh, traumatizing. That and the lead or their halter, where it sits on their nose. This is like very thin bone so if he is running around and he steps on his lead um he could break his nose which we don't want that would be terrible so for... all around safer um for hey, everyone dunk. involved but especially for the donks come on this way um, I'm hoping that them enjoying the sand as much as they do will encourage them to enter the round pen because it is going to be. Uh... It's okay. We're gonna we're gonna go around this way so that we're not walking behind Serrano. Goodness. We'll catch back up with Ella in a minute. Chat. Amen. I missed the donation. Thank you. When does Stompy's pool get refilled? Uh, I don't know if we'll refill this one, chat. We've talked about making Stompy um, like a shallow concrete dish type situation because uh, it will be easier to clean and it will be easier for Stompy to get in and out of. So. Come on. Just come in with. That is a tentative plan because we're doing one for Push Pop as well. You coming? Yeah. <laughs> Dunk. See, the idea with um, having him go in the feed stall is he's just going to have to go through this very tight space to get in, which the gate and the round pen is kind of tight. Um, you'll see um, he's really hesitant to walk in. Um, that's just because it's easier for them to turn to get out of somewhere rather than like back up. Um, so if he gets like halfway through the door um, and decides he's scared, he can't turn unless he wants to continue going in, which he doesn't usually. Um, it's also windy, so it might be tough. Um, so he has to do an awkward back up and it's just not fun. So I'm gonna try and stand over here, chat, so that we're not directly behind the donkey because that will also not be ideal. So we'll watch um, from over here. And then we've been working a little bit, I'm not gonna touch it yet, but moving this gate back and forth because gate, gates are scary. Gates are scary. Gates are scary. You got me uh, Yes, Push Pop is the tortoise uh, that chat started, uh, that we started the stream with. Look at him, he's amazing. It was a lot nicer than I thought it would be. So anytime he walks in pretty, well, just in general, when he walks in all the way, when we're first starting, I'll walk him back out. Um, I'll give him a bigger reward for walking in than I will walking out, but it gives him, I don't know, time to think about the stall as not scary because he spends so little time there and it was positive. You coming? Stompy. Good job. Get over here. Nope, 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 no. Nope. Okay. Come on. Hello. You could go in the stall. You could? That's what it's for. 
He's doing actually pretty good today. I guess it's not windy enough to like rattle the roof. That's a rock. That's okay. Sometimes we trip and it scares the donkeys. So that's another benefit of the round pin yes. is that it's a rock free space so you can back up and not over. How many pounds can Stompy hold on his back? Not many. I think for horses and donkeys, they say 20% of their body weight, so 20 pounds for Stompy. Yeah. But Stompy also only has two legs and is a bird. And yeah. up. so he's going in and out pretty well. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna have him stand out here, but I'm gonna move the gate and I'm gonna reward him for not freaking out about the gate moving. I'm gonna start by like just very gradually moving it. Um, and rewarding him for paying attention to me and not the gate. Um, and then I'll start closing it all the way and then I'll ask him to come in here and start moving the gate. We'll see how he does. Good. So a GoPro would, would work. We probably wouldn't mount a GoPro to Stompy's back. We'd probably mount it to somewhere on his front if we were Good. going to put a GoPro on Stompy. That's nice. Um, but uh, that's not something that we've that yep. I I'm aware that anyone has discussed. Yep. The gate isn't as scary when he's not in, in a small stalls. room. It also makes that noise every that's time. That's a nice noise. Nice. You look back here. Good. Yeah, we could definitely use some WD-40 down here. It's all right though. Good. For now. Yeah, uh, the pasture. We actually have some work to do at the bottom of the pasture because Good. of the erosion issues of the pasture. Because when it rains, the pasture basically turns into a giant waterfall. Um, so Good. there's a lot of erosion that happens and a lot of, uh, just general silt that has pooled at the bottom of the pasture. Good. Even stepping towards you. Yeah, he, his head is bold. Can I close it all the way? Good. That's nice. He's going to be a menace. <laughs> I tell you, as soon as the donkeys are comfortable with us. Yep. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to come in? Uh, what kind of hay do you guys use to feed the animals in the pasture? It's called coastal hay. Coastal hay. The horse is allergic to alfalfa. He so come in. This is an alfalfa free pasture. Why is Stompy afraid of his house? Uh, Stompy will go into the room, but he does not like to be closed into tight spaces. Um, so with the gate the way that it is currently, we actually couldn't close it and leave Stompy in there because he would try to get through it and probably hurt himself. Um, so we're going to have to either put shade cloth or something Good. in the um, in the way of the... It's Look, okay. he's very aware. Good. Did you guys see him? He says, whoop, whoop. There's you can hear jalapeno. Another donkey arriving to mess with the... Oh, hello. Hello. Hey. What the heck, man? <laughs> they don't have any snacks. He's also, he's sensitive about sounds in here, but also out there. So, whenever I'm working with him in here, I try to stay out of his way in case he decides to book it. Book it. Because he, if he wanted to. <laughs> hey, buddy. Can you come in? What you doing? That's nice. Sniffs. <laughs> Good. It's like a big kennel. A big kennel. It's actually doing a lot better today than the last time I worked with him. Good. Why is there wrong? Does jalapeno go inside the stall? Um, not yet. I don't believe. I think it's too dark. Um, we think he has vis uh, 
issues with his vision. And so he's super sensitive about shadows and stuff. Um, like when it's windy, scratches? yes. When it's windy, he will spook at your the shadow of your hair blowing in the breeze. Yep. Good. I am all out of green. Crushed it, he did. That's nice. I definitely noticed his vision at night seems kind of bad. Are you guys going to add a window? No, but we've talked, I think, about adding a light. Light. What'd you think? As a space, no one can bother you. It's empty. Okay. I'm going to go get more grain, and then we can work with jalapeno. jalapeno. We'll see how he feels. Jalapeno. I'll probably just work on touching, running my legs, or my arms, hands down his legs. I actually think Jalapeno secretly really likes scratches. I think he does too. I, this, you can, because I can scratch the sides of his face pretty for, aggressively. Aggressively and for a long time. Pretty aggressively and for a while. I think he likes it more than he lets on chat. I was trying to... He's coming around. I try to scratch, like, up at the top of his neck, because that's where horses groom each other, but... Mm -hmm. He's a little more sensitive about the top of his neck, especially closer to his ears. Okay. I'll be I back. see wild foxes enter the pasture enclosure. How do you guys make sure the animals stay safe from potentially rabid animals? We have donkeys. Vaccines. And vaccines. But also donkeys. <laughs> Hi, Bendy. Is the cow brush too rough for the donkeys? Um, Ella has done a little bit of work getting them used to a brush. Um, they have not quite accepted it yet. Look at these two. There you go, there's a little kick. Donkeys immune to rabies, donkeys protect pastures. Yeah, donkeys are, um, they're not, um, they're, a lot of people have donkeys as like guard animals because they are pretty, they don't mess around. I guess is is the best <laughs> the best way to describe it. They don't mess around. They are spicy. It's okay, jalapeno. It's okay, buddy. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen them use the, I've, I think I've seen Serrano go up to the hanging brush a time or two, um, but even a hand brush, it's something that we have to get them used to. Um, so just like approaching them with a brush, they're like, whoa, what is that? Um, which is something that you want to be really careful of. So like any new object that we introduce hey. to them, we assume that they are going to be fearful of it because if they're not fearful of it, then it's great that we started slow. Like we don't lose anything by starting slow. Um, but if they are afraid of it for any reason and we start too fast, we create something that we then have to overcome. Uh, and it's a lot easier to start with something that's a little scary and build up to it or treat everything as if it's a little scary and then not have to worry about it than to create something, make something scary, and then have to counter condition them to accept it. Yeah. Get touch. Get I'm scared when somebody unexpectedly approaches me with a brush too. Exactly. <laughs> Touch. Are you talking about like grooming? Yeah. They generally don't need to be groomed. It's kind of, it's okay. Maybe. Touch. It's like someone asked if we would ever bathe the donkeys one time and I was like, hello. Can um, I? Their legs are twitching because of flies. Touch. You're ruining it, respectfully. <laughs> I think my therapist said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about really the, the uh, bathing or No, I I mean like, I think about like counter conditioning things and um Can. not Can making touch. something scary unnecessarily. Good. Well, I think a lot of the things that we apply to animals are also applicable to people. Oh, for sure. Um touch. it's I think people are just different because you can talk to them. <laughs> It's like how in I the same language. <laughs> it's like how I positively reinforce myself for studying with yeah. Doritos. Yeah, we reward ourselves as well. Yeah, touch for sure. Operant conditioning, indeed. Good. <laughs> touch. 
Serrano, we love you, but it's not your time right now. It's You're always Serrano's time. It's always Serrano's this time. Is, this is what it means when a donkey you gets, can get scratches? gets comfy. You can He's get like, scratches. I'm here. I'm here. Will Winnie ever get a bath? She doesn't really need it. Yeah. Unless it's for something medical. Bathing them, they just, they're huge. Yeah. Bathing them, he doesn't like. Okay, that's all I have for you. Okay. It's really... It's so true. Learning about animal behavior has really helped me with my mental health journey. That's great. Yep. I think the... I think the, the more interesting thing about working with at least some species of animals, um, coming from like a bird, bird perspective at least, their motivations are like much... Let me see if I can get them to... Much more... Face this way. Um, I'll look you. Much, much easier, I think, to read um, than human motivations are. Oh, but same concepts going? apply. Where are you going? Um, we used to talk about that like with my... Uh, with some of my family members, like if you don't call them for a long time and then you do call them and they immediately give you a hard time, you're like, this does not make me want to call you. Hi, friend. Are you using forms of negative reinforcement? Uh, are you using forms of negative reinforcement or just positive with the treats? Uh, there is some with... Uh... There's a type of horse training called natural horsemanship that is a lot about um, using negative reinforcement because it's how horses interact with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I try to, if I am using negative reinforcement, I also try to combine positive reinforcement with it. So if they're scared of something, I'll show them it. And if they don't freak out, I take it away, but then I also give them grain. Mm -hmm. So, um, I try to do a combination. Um, and it's something that you can see as some, uh, I think it's a negative reinforcement. I think you have to be very aware when you're talking about negative reinforcement. I think the words that we use to talk about these things um, are very easy to misinterpret because yeah. in our heads we think positive is good and negative is bad. Um, but in the world of training, positive just means that you're adding something to the situation to encourage a behavior and negative means you're removing something uh, from a back. scenario to encourage a behavior. So in um, we give you grain. In terms of like animals that are more skittish, negative reinforcement can actually be we, oh, uh, a really good way to, to earn their trust oh, um, because you can remove things from their environment. If that's what they want, um, then that's a way for you to give the animal what they want. Um, so Come on. even though negative reinforcement contains the word negative, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad because uh, the tier is positive reinforcement. <laughs> Um, negative reinforcement, it. positive punishment, negative punishment, or just punishment, uh, where positive reinforcement, like I said, adding something Go. to a situation to Go. encourage a behavior, negative reinforcement, removing something from a situation to encourage a behavior, um, positive punishment is adding something to discourage a behavior, and punishment in general is taking something away um, to discourage a behavior. Does that make sense? That was a lot of words. It makes sense to me, words. I think. Okay. Someone really wants attention today. <laughs> all of your animals can currently currently can be interacted with. Do you have to train and interact with all your ambassadors? If yes, and how would you be able to interact with a new ambassador if there's supposed to be no contact? Um, no contact. Hello. <laughs> um, well, the the tier system is essentially just touch. What positive reinforcement? Touch. If you look at if you look at what Ella's doing. She is touching jalapeno and Touch. then offering grain. So he, she, he's being positively reinforced. He's getting something for Touch. allowing her to touch Good. him. Positive reinforcement. Hi, buddy. It's a scritch. Um, the Touch. tier system, just if you look Touch. at it, it goes from least invasive to most invasive or least intrusive to most intrusive. Um, so I think I've used this example before. Uh, where I talk about like birds, Touch. if somebody was like going into a room to get Good. a bird out of a room, um, the more that you use, the more intrusive Touch. methods, um, the Good. more you're going to have to rely on them, uh, which is something that you don't want. Can I help you? Touch. 
Um, so I think I use the example of getting a bird out of the room, Touch. like a bird that has dresses. If I were to go into a room Good. with a bird who has dresses, could I go up and just grab those dresses? Yes. Would I? No. Uh, I want that bird to step up willingly and then Touch. I want to take the dresses because if I go up and grab the dresses Good. and that bird tries to fly away and then I'm holding it, it creates a really negative association with me, right? Don't want that. Versus if I go up there and I offer my glove and I say, you know, step up, if they're trained to step up, they step up willingly, then I take the dresses. If they were to fly off at that point, I would let them go. I wouldn't hold those dresses um, because I want them to know that if they stay, they get what they, you know, they get a tidbit or whatever kind of reinforcement. But if they go, they just don't get anything and that's okay. That's Touch. their prerogative. They can say no in that situation. Versus if I were just to always go in there, grab the dresses, they'd have a bad experience. What do you think is going to happen the next time I go in that room? In order to get them out, I'm going to have to grab the dresses and create a negative experience again. And then it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and gotcha. worse. Good. So by utilizing primarily the lesser intrusive gotcha. ways of training, positive reinforcement, Good. and to an extent negative reinforcement, like we said, just removing something you want to build trust, gotcha. um, then Good. we continue to build on that trust, build on that trust, build on that trust. That way, when Touch. mistakes happen, because inevitably they do, nobody's perfect Good. all of the time. Um, there are going to be things that you can't control. If Jalapeno is having a really good Touch. session and something spooks him, there's nothing that Ella can do if she's next to him when that happens. And there's no way to, to communicate to him that she wasn't associated with that scary yeah. thing. Touch. Um, we rely on the trust that we've built previously to help him overcome that and to encourage him to come back. That's why I walked away when Serrano walked over here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Sorry, somebody asked what dresses are. Dresses are occasionally when you see birds um, in facilities, they're usually um, strips of leather or paracord. The Touch. birds will have anklets around their legs and then the dresses will go through those anklets. Yep. Um, and they're primarily used for walking around with birds or for holding them for a program or something like that. Touch. Um, some places don't use them, some places do. It also is very dependent Good. on um, the surroundings for that bird. Um, like if it's a safe place for them to be out and about, then that's great, then you don't need okay. to worry about dresses. Uh, but if they're in like a gymnasium or something where they can end up in the rafters or fly into a window, then those dresses come in handy. Yeah, it's a safety thing. There's some things that are like, no matter how well you train an animal, it's just, I feel like some things are like a non-negotiable. Yeah, sometimes basically. you have to make a decision for the well-being of the animal, and that's Easy. not always. And again, those are situations that we rely on the positive time that we've spent and the trust that we've built, uh, because we know not everything can be positive 100% of the time. So, touch. Good. I was also thinking about it. I think the round pen would be good for vet visits. Yeah, because it's a place where we can get one animal yes. by themselves. How did y'all end up rescuing macaws? My grandfather owned one and when he passed away we couldn't Touch. keep him, always was fond of those beautiful birds. Um, the macaws came to us from another facility. Yeah. Um, I think Tika was abandoned. Touch. Uh, left at, at a vet clinic or something? Yeah, she was like left in a cardboard box, I think, which seems ballsy, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, no, <laughs> the entire drive back from California with Tico, they were in a plastic crate, she was tearing it up. Yeah. So the fact that she stayed in a cardboard <laughs> box overnight is amazing. Um, yeah, Makai is screaming in the background. Um, Touch. I think Miley was also a Good. pet, we believe. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but they all came from the same rescue. Yes, it was um, a rescue that the woman who owned it was older, so she was downsizing. Mm -hmm. um, that's also where we got Nugget. Touch. I'm getting grain crumbs all over Serrano, jalapeno. Um, Parrots are very hard to keep. Touch. That's why we have them, to show people that Won't they're that hard. Won't that be punishment to take the bird instead of asking them to step up? Um, Touch. If you were to go in and use the dresses to force the bird onto your glove, that would be bad. Touch. Um, I don't necessarily think it would be like classified Touch. as Good. a form of punishment because you've not really added anything or taken Touch. anything away, but you have removed choice. Yeah. From the scenario. Touch. So I suppose, I guess, Good. definitely a form of punishment. That's why, like I was saying, um, we would absolutely 
not do that. But if you are holding a bird on the glove, like if you're walking with a bird that has dresses and you're holding those dresses, you have to make a decision. You have to be watching your surroundings at all time because it's your responsibility when that bird is sitting on your glove to be looking for things that might scare that bird. Yeah. So looking, it involves listening. knowing your bird. I don't know, feeling the wind. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the direction of the wind. Like yeah. if you're holding a bird and there's a tailwind behind them, that's gonna throw off their balance more than if it's a headwind. Um, well done. But if you aren't paying attention to your environment and you walk up to something that scares your bird, a bird that's scared is a little bit less predictable than a bird that's trained to free fly as well. So it depends on where you are. It depends on what's around you, whether or not you can just have the luxury of letting go of that bird and getting them back. Like if we were on a really busy road and there were just cars whizzing by and I was holding a bird and something scared that bird, I wouldn't let that bird go because I'm weighing the risk of letting that bird go. Can my relationship take a hit of a bait? Or is this bird gonna get hit by a car? That's an easy one for me to decide. Yeah. I'm gonna hold on to that bird. So <laughs> there's a, uh, when you're, when you're making those decisions and, and when you commit to working with an animal, you have to be very aware of everything going on around them. That's why sometimes when the weather's bad, we don't train mm -hmm. because we know certain animals are sensitive to weather changes. Um, and that just goes again to reinforce the idea that n there's no way that we can be 100% positive 100% of the time. It's just not realistic. And if we were to set that goal for ourselves, we'd be setting ourselves up for failure. And we try to set the animals up for success, so why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we also try to set ourselves up for success? <laughs> we should watch that spot in Jalapeno. If fur doesn't grow back, we gotta put <laughs> sunscreen on him. Because he's a little... I heard a donkey in real baby. life for the first time yesterday. They're loud, man. They're loud. <laughs> they are loud. Look at his tongue. <laughs> I can hear Serrano from inside my house. I'm a big fan of success. Yeah, uh, that's really the whole point of training. Uh, so you may hear uh, people in the training world talk about the ABCs of training, which stands for antecedents, behavior, consequences. Um, so when we are looking to train an animal, we try to arrange the situation in such a way that will encourage success. Hence, the round pen. Look at that, a, first, a full circle moment. <laughs> we are creating an environment where we are more likely to see success for the animals, which is great. That's what we want. We want to set them up for success. Yes, success and what was I going to say? It's comfortable for them. It's bigger than a stall, so they have more room to get away from us, but it's still confined enough that we can safely. Yeah, they still have a choice. Yeah. Uh, they can still say no, uh, but it is safer. It's good stuff. Safer for people too. Safer I, for everybody. And like, I, especially with these two. Really big deal that we can have one animal working at a time. Mm -hmm. That's huge for us in the pasture, for anybody who's been here for a while and has seen. <laughs> The circus. The circus in action. All right. Well, we we're supposed to put the round pin together, but I never thought about the time the about the time that a bird isn't flying would something would be something to be aware of. Yeah, litter box. I mean, we had birds um, often um, that were afraid of very specific things. So if we were walking into a, an environment, and for a lot of birds, when you first start training them, door frames, very scary. Very scary. Very scary. Tight space. Uh, kennels, they have to be trained to accept a kennel or to voluntarily kennel. Um, that's the, not... The crows are scared of black tissue paper. Not really. Yeah, the crows are scared of black tissue paper, specifically. Um, that's something that we know. So when we're making toys, we, uh, we don't do that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so... We knew one Thank of the you. first things that I was taught when I was out in Nepal when they were doing, when I was learning how to do the falconry lessons was that uh, um, I worked with two falconers and they talked about bringing their birds to like meets and stuff when they were doing the training and there would be people who would like bring their birds to, to falconry meets and be like, oh, my bird's never seen a broom before, so <laughs> I'm not going to get him out right now. So, hey. Are the macaws flying at all? Uh, <laughs> not yet. Tico I did. have seen Tico fly. Yeah. Do a couple little hops from perch to perch, but not intentional. Gross. Intentional flights for us yet. Um, but uh, I don't know if we would free fly the macaws or not. Um, 
I know that Miley specifically, I don't know so much about Tico, but Miley is super sensitive to birds flying overhead. Um, so she would have a long road to free fly. It's not that we wouldn't want to free fly them. I just don't know if she is the best candidate, candidate for I think, it. Um, like, I don't know if it would be fair to ask her to, because I think she would be scared. Yeah. I think it would result in something a little bit more frantic. And I think Tika responds to anything Miley responds to. So if Miley's freaking out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think they would also get shot out here. Uh, yeah, it'd be, I, it would be, it, it, there would be a lot of things to take into consideration before we made that decision. How'd Winnie do? Oh, look at Winnie. She ate some grain. <laughs> Is Wendy? <laughs> you good, ma'am? Did you enjoy some grain? Did you have a sufficient amount of grain? Yummy. <laughs> Donkey. Glad I can help, Winnie. <laughs> I feel like I can use everything I just learned today to better train my guinea pigs. I hope so. What are you going to train your guinea pigs to do? Can I help you? Please? Did you also get grain? Or is that just remaining from people feeding you? No. Is it rampant time? No. You gave them like... Oh, hi, cow. Hello, cow. You got a little... in a win. The Winnie van. Dude. The stinky cow. She's very smelly. Oh, she's so smelly. She's so smelly. You good? <laughs> Worked hard. All right, shall we go paint with a push pop? Push pop. Well, there he goes. This is about to be some... <laughs> He's going. He's going. Oh. Donk drama. You are a lot. Does Winnie have issues with the flies? Um, she, there are a lot of flies around her frequently. We also use fly spray on Winnie, um, but they don't seem to get through her coat like they do with the donkeys. She lathers up her legs with a thick layer of saliva. Yep. Donkeys. Oh, uh, does boys. Winnie really smell bad? Yeah, that's not an exaggeration. She, when is, she burps. Is the smelliest ambassador. Okay. I will stand by that. Well. How are Winnie's feet doing? Winnie's feet are doing very well. Lindsay and Nick have taken that on because I would really like to be able to breathe. Really like to be able to breathe on a regular basis. So I have bowed out as frequently as I can. <laughs> More smelly than the musky foxes. I would rather smell the foxes yeah. all day, every day than Winnie burps for even five minutes. Winnie also, like, the foxes, it's just a constant smell because that's just how their enclosure smells. Yeah, yeah. But Winnie, it's like a burst. It's, yeah, and it's, it's, it's brutal. It doesn't, you don't have enough time to get used to it and it catches you off guard. Doesn't Maya think the chickens are the smelliest? The chickens are, the chicken, the chicken poop is smelly. There is specific chicken poop Yeah. that smells bad. Yeah. All right. Oh, there's donkeys rolling. They're rolling? He's not rolling in the sand pit though. We're too far away to see him. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Just resubscribed. That might be another reason why Jalapeno isn't as affected by the flies. I think he rolls a lot more. Serrano, take notes. Take notes. Serrano also rolls, but I think Jalapeno does it more. He's rolling. <laughs> Brown donkey. <laughs> He's having a great time. I, I like that Serrano's just standing in the dust cloud. Don't roll next to each other. Please don't. He's always looking real dusty. Serrano's like, this does look like a nice place to roll. Don't roll right next to each other. I've seen videos of horses <laughs> rolling into one another, and then they get stuck. And then you have to pull them by their feet to get them unstuck, and it's not a good time. Can you imagine if we had to go unstick the donkey? No, no. That would not be a positive time for anyone. No. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for streaming today. I had an awful day. 
gas leak from my stove and I was asleep alone and I had to oh. get the fire department afterwards. I just needed to relax. I'm so sorry that sounds incredibly traumatic. We're glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad you're We're gonna paint okay. with a tortoise. I feel like that will help. Or at least somewhat okay. I would hope if you weren't okay, you would be not on Twitch. Not watching Twitch. Oh, oh he's going down. Oh, no. <laughs> he's down. <laughs> they're down. Guys, can you see them? I feel like the tree's really in the way. But they're both down. Quick what he cheered 500 bits. Feet. Feet. Hello. You good? Stomp? <laughs> Also booped by Stompy today. All right, are we going for a push pop painting? Let's do it. All right, chat, it's time. The phone's also probably ready to overheat at this point because we've been outside <laughs> standing for, at I don't the know, sun. not that long. <laughs> Can you guys train Stompy at all? Stompy is trained to do very basic things. Target. Target. Respond to recall. Respond to a whistle recall very slowly. Uh, but does understand. Trained to... Can paint with the target via target training. Um, goats are pissed. Stompy's not stupid. This is one of my this is well, one of my soapboxes, chat. <laughs> well, um, biologically, he's smart enough to be an emu. His uh, brain is 0.06 percent of his body weight. That is true, Ella. But um, all of these animals are evolved to do something completely different. So if we try to, he fills a niche. Measure their intelligence by what we consider intelligent. It's not fair. <laughs> Who's the most difficult ambassador to train so far? Uh, I mean, it depends on the ambassador. They all have different monkeys. The monkeys are hard. There's not nearly as much of a delay on this as I thought there was. Okay. Sometimes I think it changes. Do all of the cars have goat dents on them? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Mine mostly has scratches. Poppy is under the rats. How would you train an ambassador if it requires no contact? No contact just means there's a barrier. Yeah. But they can be immediately on the other side of the barrier. And the barrier can be open. Like, we will be able to provide reinforcement through said barrier. Mm-hmm. It'd be just like giving the rats a piece of yeah, food Yeah, it'd be like cage. working with the rats through their enclosure. Look at, that head was just through the hole. Why are you like this? Um, I can show you the chins after we, after we do a little painting session, guys. Um, push pop is ready. Uh, Moomin was 678. All right. And Snork was 574. Okay. Oh, uh, one I don't of our know. Roaches is upside down. We did get weights Rude. on the rats. I think chips was 340. And now it's 270. Sorry, chat. I walked away. I'm trying to get push pops. She's mm -hmm. running. Push pop. She's running. I'm trying to get her stuff ready. She never stops moving. She never stops. If she's in her enclosure, like her temporary tank, she's just back and forth, climbing over her hide and... All right, chat, pick... Flipping her water bowl. Pick three colors three, for push pop. First three, first three I see. Pick them. Orange, purple, purple blue. blue. Those are good colors. Light blue or dark blue. Go! Both. Oh, 
All of you guys are too late. It's orange, purple, and blue. They don't know they're too late. We're going both blues. Okay. I'm literally just gonna. Did you see that I got a papaya? I got a papaya for this week, Ella. Exciting. I did not see that. Exciting. I almost got a papaya the other day, but I, the last time I had papaya, I didn't really like it, but I'm gonna like it. I'm pretty sure I don't like papaya, but I'm hoping that the animals do. Well, that was one of the things that they said was good for the Everybody, pause, right? pretty much, everybody. everybody. Okay. Like, Toast can have it, Push Pop could have it if we ever gave her fruit. <laughs> Or do you feel like red would look good on this? She's so fast. She Remember said tortoises so were fast. slow. Never met Push Pop. Never met Push Pop. All right. All right, chat. Let me get her food ready. Oh, she's going after you. Let's see if I can. This is her food. Set. We gotta weigh her first, chat. We gotta get a weight on Push Pop. <laughs> chat. This is what she does with chicken poop. Is there a way you could get an impression of her shell pattern with the paint, maybe with the plastic bags? I don't think it would come out very well. It would be cool, but I don't think we could. Maybe we could do it with the... This thing. I don't know. I don't think we could like press it into like all of the grooves very well. You know what we could do? We put this over her shell, push it down, paint it. A thin layer of paint. And then try and like stamp it. Yeah. Maybe. I don't think we could do that without traumatizing her either. What did I come in here for? These. This is what I came in here for. Tongs. To reinforce the tortoise. Her shell is very pretty. Are you guys enjoying this view? <laughs> she was exploring the stand. Do you guys want to see how well Push Pop understands the scale? Are you ready? Wait, wait, wait. I think it might also be because she, uh, she's <laughs> <laughs> because it's green. <laughs> Can you come up here? Brilliant. Great job. Would you like a piece of lettuce for your troubles? That was beautiful. 1170 today. Would you like another piece of lettuce for your troubles? That's beautiful. Well done. Okay. Here we go. 1170. Would you like to come and paint, Miss Ma'am? <laughs> this way. This way. This way. This way. This way. This way. You can do it. You can do it. I know it's green. I know that's hard. That is Polly chat. Polly has some feelings about push pop. What was um, Push Pop's initial weight? Do you remember when we first got her? Um, I think she's pretty much been around 11.50 the entire time. She's been around 11.50. Um, she had, when we first got her, she had started gaining weight and then she dropped a couple grams. But now she's on the up and Good up. Job. She's, uh, her not, weight has fluctuated a good bit. They're not chopsticks. They're long tongs that we use to feed our <laughs> reptiles um, because I don't think a bite from Push Pop would feel very good. She literally just tries to eat the... So Push Pop painting is a mix of target training and putting... Um, 
putting food on because she just tries to eat the paint. That's why she paints with a plastic bag jet. <laughs> it's here. Good job. <laughs> You want to come up here? You have to come this way. Look. Good job. I thought I got all the air out of this bag. I did not. Can you come this way? Is she on track for her percentile for her age? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I think she's... I think she's quite small. I could be wrong, though. If but she is actually four years old, yeah. Quite I small. I think... Uh, She's mushing all the colors together, chat. I wonder what in the world you're thinking these colors in, what in the world would these colors represent to you in terms of a snack? <laughs> Hibiscus flower. She's like, these are, yeah. At what age will she be full grown? We don't know because of the average, I think, time it takes is, uh, I think, 15 to 25 years for some colonists. So 15 to 25 years. She's got yeah, time. But she, yeah, but she's also a little, a little behind. She is definitely behind. Miss Ma'am. Can you buy her painting for a million dollars? Do you actually have a million dollars? Very nice. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Have some squash. Can you come this way? You're really, really into the blue. Really into these colors, chat. Note to self. The first painting that we did with Push Up was pink, yellow, and orange. And was definitely a... Uh, I keep on thinking that she's put like a little tear in the bag, but she hasn't. It's just the calcium that's on her face. <laughs> Here you go. Have a zucchini slice for your troubles. <laughs> Miss Pam. <laughs> Polly is jealous. For goodness sake, please get a snack. I feel bad that you're just... <laughs> she was. <laughs> At least she is. She's doing more than just walking over it. I feel like we're teasing her. She is trying to get the colors. We're just gonna sprinkle some greens on everything so that she can actually get snacks. She's getting, what green is she getting, Kayla? Uh, she's getting dandelion and endive today. And some squash and zucchini. We really varied our, the greens we get every week because of push pop. Yeah. We used to just get romaine and then, and then on occasion. toast would get. Arugula. Arugula, yeah. There you go, sweetie. Can she eat blueberries? Uh, I believe she can, um, but most people say that they don't really need to eat fruit. It's definitely very much a treat. Um, so it's not essential and it's not great for them. So she does not get fed a lot of fruit. Can turtles eat chocolate? Uh, probably not, because I would assume chocolate. You don't want to give them added sugar? Yeah. No, c cocoa, I don't know. And then she also gets um, hay as well. I think the only ambassador 
that we could give chocolate to is the rats, right? We saw somewhere that someone was like, your rat can have a chocolate chip on occasion. Yeah, and on occasion, we have never given the rats chocolate. No. Not intentionally, anyway. I'm saying they haven't found it on the floor of the nut house a time or two, but. Mia got into chocolate once. And yeah, that was actually terrifying. Parrots not good. Cabbage for fiber, indoors. yay or nay. We do not feed them um, much in the way of cabbage. Cabbage. Um, so when you're thinking about feeding, Seaweed, what? I went down a rabbit hole with this. I did the same thing when I when we got toast, but um, when you're looking at the types of greens to feed, there are things called goitrogens and oxalates, and then you have to be worried about your calcium phosphorus ratio and all of this other stuff. Um, so we kind of have our go-to greens. Can the chinchillas eat chocolate? No. No. Someone also brought up the dairy and chocolate. Um, yeah. uh, since rats are omnivores, I think they're a little bit more flexible. Like, their digestive system's a little more adapted to eat a variety of things, but the chins are herbivores. Chef, you don't have to apologize. We don't feed, we don't feed cabbage. Let me, let me see where cabbage is on my list. Because I think it's on my list. Cabbage is high in goitrogens, um, which are a set, uh, large amounts of goitrogens when they are consumed can interfere with the function of the thyroid gland. Um, but some of the foods that are high in goitrogen have a really, goitrogens have a really good calcium to phosphorus ratio. So collard greens are an example, but their calcium to phosphorus ratio is like unbeatable. It's like 10 to 1. Um, but they also are high in oxalates, which are cal uh, compounds that bind calcium and minerals. So essentially, when we get something like collards, she only gets them like once a month in terms of like, we'll buy a bunch and she'll get it mixed in with other greens because it is a nutritious green, but obviously there's also downsides to it. Um, cabbage is also high in goitrogens, um, but it's not up there on the couch. So it just doesn't have the same nutrition, nutritional benefits for being high in goitrogens as something like collards does. Does that make sense? It was a lot, it was a lot. Um, but she also gets lots of hay. So the greens and the hay make up about 70% of her diet. Um, she gets some veggies um, and very, very little fruit. But we would use it as like a treat from time to time for sure. Someone in chat just said I've read that giving rats the occasional dark chocolate can actually help fend off respiratory issues. Good job coming around. In that case. No way. Give it to case. her. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Thank you. Very nice. Um so yeah, I, I went through, I went, I went down a dark, dark rabbit hole when we got Push Pop because I was very worried about <laughs> her diet. Because um, the diet that she had prior to coming here was just, I was mostly romaine lettuce, apples, strawberries, and blueberries. Oh, that's um, a whole lot of nothing. It's a whole lot of nothing for a tortoise. Um, she did get hay as well, but... Um, I think the parents, when we got them as well, were on... Primarily fruit. I was I was pretty thrilled that Push Pop took to her greens as well as she did. Yeah. Pretty thrilled. She was missing out. She ran. How many grams of veggies food. do you guys usually feed her a day? Uh, I don't weigh her food. I think the general consensus for Push Pop is like about like the amount that would cover her shell. That's what I do. <laughs> That's what it's kind of the same for toast. Some people the size said. of his head, their head. Um. But she, she mostly just grazes for two hours. Um, since she's not, um, like... Was it four hours? Regularly. She gets four hours total grazing time a day. Okay. Two in the morning and two in the afternoon. But typically she, like, eats really well. And then she just stops when she's done. Um, and since she's not on, like, um, kind of a predictable trend where her weight's concerned, um, she very much gets what she eats. So, I don't know if they can have 
nightshades. Can I have eggplant? Do you remember saying eggplant? I don't think it's on any of my lists. Yeah, no eggplant. Carrot? Sparingly. 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 Um, she can eat flowers. Yes, we do. We we do want to grow her a garden. Yes, we do. There is going to be a section in her closure, enclosure that is fenced off to have flowers. Flowers. Um, Somebody asked what animals we'd like at Alveus. I would like a vulture. <laughs> There's not anything. I don't know. There's nothing job. specific. We have such a wide variety. I don't know. I think the only thing we are missing maybe is a cat. As a treat, would you feed her cactus pads? We can get them from the grocery store. Yeah. Nepales. We also have prickly pears that grow out here. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, sounds mm -hmm. like. Great target. You did so well. That was beautiful. OK, you can't eat the target, though. Okay, there you go. Well done. Sorry, Chad. She came right over to the target because she's, you know, push pop. She's brilliant that way. It's not an ocelot. You're going to feel so stupid tomorrow. Hey, push pop, can you come back? Yes, man. Look, target. Any animals you would not like to have? Um, an ocelot. She's really like, but the astroturf is green. Good. <laughs> Brilliant. She's amazing. <laughs> we're back. And we're back. <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, Good job, sweetie. Why not an ocelot? Uh, mostly to spite Alocat. Anything I wouldn't like to have. Um, any type of crocodilian. Sounds like a bad time. Or otters. Anything in the water. <laughs> Ducks. Anything <laughs> that requires. Ugh. Yeah. A pond. Yeah. Mm. That's not encouraging, is it? Is it true that stress makes turtle shell less smooth? Um, Depends on the stress. Yeah. If it's an environmental, like not getting the right type of light. So for yes. these guys, um, their first year is really important. Um, and that, oh, good job, good. That was very nice. That was beautiful. You did so good. Um, <laughs> She's amazing. Doesn't the new ambassador have a water section? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but it's hopefully going to be running, maybe. Running water, and I think it's going to be mostly decorative. She is a quick learner, highly motivated. She's coming for the mic. Never mind. She thought about it for a second. She's so cute. Hyenas? That would be crazy. Hyenas are massive. I don't think y'all know. <laughs> I don't think her. She doesn't want that one. I don't think you realize. Hyenas would be cool, but that would be scary. How bad would a poppy bite be? I don't know. What is she? Well, seeing as she also eats a bunch of chicken shit, I'm sure it would get infected. <laughs> um, 
But, I mean, she can pr crunch down pretty hard. We don't want to find out, basically. Um, one of the other things I was going to say about her shell is that there is a lot of information online about, like, um, tortoises that have had, um, due to poor diet and, you know, poor husbandry, um, their shells can be very, very deformed. Um, and it can cause something called pyramiding, which does uh, affect the smoothness of their shell. Can you turn around? Where are you going? What are we doing? Do you just want to, do you just want to hear, do you want to get the rest of these? Do you want to decide what you want out of all that? There you go. Decide. Do turtles need UT UVB? I believe so. Yes. yes. Poppy will have uh, UVB inside of her enclosure. I'm not going to give you any hints. I told you what it is. Sorry. I it's Winston. Yeah. Shells can get shell rot. That's good to know. What is white stuff all over the veggies? It's calcium. <laughs> it's calcium day for push pop. So she gets calcium once a week. That's why her face looks like she just did a line of coke, <laughs> but um, no, it's calcium. Uh, is Texas not sunny enough to replicate her African habitat? Um, in the When she has access to the outside, yes, uh, we're not worried about it, but in the winter, if she has to be kept inside for a long period of time, um, we want her to have access to UVB inside as well. So there will come a time when it is cold enough that she will have to be inside, and we want to make sure that um, she still has UVB in there. Do you have a name for the new ambassador, or are they arriving with a name already? I believe they are already named. Whether or not we keep those names, who knows? Does she not hibernate then? Uh, no, they do. They will hibernate. I think is the issue is we have to lock them up because if they dig too deep and she start can hibernating, yeah. Um. So when we'll have to. Uh, have a standard operating procedure where once the weather hits a certain temperature, if there's risk of it going beneath it, we have to make sure she's inside before she can dig deep enough where we cannot get her. No more food names. Also, Who's I don't know. That? Who's, what's wrong with food names? Someone said, need food themes names. We just have so many food themed names. Oh. Let's see. I love our food themed names. Coconut, push pop, chips. Nilla. Nilla. Nugget. Toast. Noodle. Toast. <laughs> Jalapeno. Serrano. Baked bean. Tortellini. We need something original. Oliver. Nugget. Yeah. Oliver. Uh, I don't know if Oliver counts. Would be quicker to say non-food related names. Yeah. <laughs> I like food. <laughs> Push pops, really. What's she gonna do? Puppy is I, not a food name. When I put her in her enclosure and all she has is hay, she's gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> I need a bob. Cass, casserole or cass? For short. I like I that already, one, actually. I already had a Bob in my life that I oh. loved as an animal, so we can't use the name Bob. That's the reason we didn't name her Speedy. Yeah. I knew a tortoise named Speedy. I knew a rat named Speedy. Current or favorite ambassador names? I really like Moomin and Snork. Also, I'm biased because I named them. <laughs> Casserole would be such a good name for an armadillo. <laughs> I don't know what my favorite ambassador name is. Ketchup and mustard, peanut butter and jelly. Um, Appa and Mama are good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how you name one of them. Was it Momo who was named or was it Appa? Momo was named, Appa's name was Kevin. Yeah, I know, I was gonna say, how do you come up with Kevin? 
and then Momo. I worked with vultures that were named Kevin and Bob. I like Siren's name because Alfredo and Pesto. I think of it now as like a police siren and not as like a mermaid siren, and I think it fits her better. Albert and Einstein. It's funny. When, um, so Abbott's name was Abbott. So we had Abbott and Costello, which is a comedy duo. I'm not really sure. I didn't name them. Um, I've heard of them, but I'm not really sure what they did. Um, but nope, then. No, nope, that's, no. That's, Costello that's passed away. And then we got Coconut, and I wanted to name Coconut something that kind of matched Abbott. So in my head, I was like, we call him Edgar Allan Crow, and then we call him Edgar for short. That's cute. Um, and then they went with Coconut, That's which rude. is... That's incredibly rude. Such a stupid name for a crow. Are you done? You did a great job. Bye. She crushed it. All right, I think we are done with this painting. Abbott is a tough name to have in Texas. It is. It is definitely a tough name to have. Not to, not to, to have an Abbott by itself is a tough name in Texas. I'm not going to get into it. Okay. All right, Push Pop. You did a great job. We're going to take this out of the bag so we can do a reveal so everyone can see it. I think I put too much paint on this one, but that's okay. That's fine. Who are we naming? We're not naming anybody. We're just talking about names. We're just talking about names. Somebody asked what our favorite names were. Oops. She smushed it all around. She and Georgie have similar. She's got. Hold on. She's coming to get it. <laughs> She's coming. There it is. She oh, was really into this brother. blue spot over here by my thumb. <laughs> it's beautiful. Wow. It is textured. Okay, push bot. You did a beautiful job. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Have y'all seen the area where the new enclosure is going? I guess y'all haven't really been back there before really to compare, into blue. but eating blue. Yes. It is huge. All right. Okay. There it so is. So y'all, it's all bad. All right, push pop. It's She's time. She's still going. Oh no, she she got away from you, chat. She got away. Eleven times the fox enclosure. Okay. There she mm -hmm. is. All right, let's get her some hay. And then we can put her up and get a Polly out and see how Polly feels about painting. What's Push Pop's weight? 1170. 1170 grams. grams. Most of our weights that are here are gonna be in grams. I think the only one who's different is the foxes and noodle, we technically weigh in pounds, right? Because... The foxes get weighed in cakes. Cakes? Did cakes. I not say cakes? I meant cakes. Uh, she was 1180 on the 9th, push pop. Hmm. So... It's a lot easier to weigh in grams than it is pounds. Oh, Push Pop's taking you off for a ride. <laughs> um, it's also uh, more specific to weigh in curate. Because if you weigh in pounds and ounces, yeah. there's... Pounds are too big for... There's, t I think, 28 grams in... Is it 28? I don't know. I think it's 28 grams. 
and announce. I don't know. On a scale of one to incredibly offended, like 12. How upset is Push Pop gonna be that she's got no veggies in here and <laughs> just stay? She's too fast. All right, well, we were supposed to put together a round pin. Oh yeah, I don't know where, uh, where Nick is. Oh, she's got a couple. I'll put these on top. She'd probably still be offended. I would, but. <laughs> Okay, there we go. She just gets around too much. That's correct. Don't ask how I know. <laughs> I'm so glad I got it right. That's so nice. Don't ask. Okay, I won't. Push pop, are you ready to go home? She's still moving. Oh, are you talking about weed? Vincent would be so proud of Poppy for painting that mask. That that masterpiece. It is. There is a there is a, there is a spot that's very reminiscent of Van Gogh. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? It's this spot. Anonymous just bought Elvis hoodie. These ones. Thank you for buying a hoodie. This one. Right? Oh, it does. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's got it's got Van Gogh vibes. Out of the corner of your eye, it kind of looks like a <laughs> starry night. It does. <laughs> Van Gogh vibes. She was inspired. Push Pop knows all about illicit substances, doesn't she? Look at her face. Inspired. It's amazing. She had a lot of time out today. Out for a she has. while. How do you feel, Polly? <laughs> Polly is pissed. I just, I can't set the camera anywhere because she just keeps moving out of frame. <laughs> you coming back? Oh, she came for the scratch and noise. She gets stuck all the time. She is fantastic. <laughs> Polly, thoughts, feelings, opinions? An active lady. Have Poppy and Polly been out together? They have. Um, they have. And push pop. It's it's fine. <laughs> push pop walked up to Polly and Polly had feelings. <laughs> yeah, she didn't stop loud sc ones. <laughs> screaming for at least ten minutes. Probably more. I don't know. Uh yeah, push pop does eat Polly's uh poop if they're out together and somebody's not in here watching. All right, are you ready, Push Pop? I'm gonna go back. There's no way for me to, I can get Polly ready first. Uh, chat, what color do you want Polly to paint with? First three colors? First three colors. Pink, Pink orange, orange, green. green. Purple, gold. I don't have gold. I'm just gonna like brush, brush the color across this so that it's not like a ton of paint. Neon black, what? Pink, orange, green, those were the three? I believe so. Yes. We got the Crayola washable paint. I think they make exactly eight colors for it. It might be more. The 
camera in Push Pops enclosure is going to be so busy. Yes. <laughs> it's going to have to work. Wouldn't a black light be purple? Okay. All right. We're going to see how this goes. Does she ever get tired? Yeah, she, uh, sometimes at night when I walk in here, she's snoozing. She's out. All right. See how that goes. There's Polly's paint set up. <laughs> See how it goes. Push she, pop! <laughs> she's getting her steps in. I can't even see her with how fast she's moving. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> she is persistent, Trash. She's, yeah. Really good at getting around. Whoever is in charge of naming ambassadors, give them employee of the month for Push Pop. I don't make the rules. <laughs> Uh, Push Pop was actually, somebody said it in chat, I think, at some point, that we should have named Toast Push Pop. And then we were like, Push Pop would be a great name for a tortoise. And that's how Push Pop got her name. Yeah, we don't need a livestock guardian dog. We should just let her. Yeah, let her she's lose got some it. Property. Push pop, are you? <laughs> I feel bad putting her up because she's so. I think we could leave her out at night. She's just going. I think. I okay. forgot to get banana for <clears throat> the marms. Uh oh. Forgot. <coughs> I'm gonna have to go get. Sorry, chat. Um, they'll survive. I am gonna go grocery shopping tonight. If you want to grab a banana. Maybe she likes scritches. We don't really know if Push Pop likes scritches. Hopefully someday. We're still in the building some trust phase. Uh, I don't think we'd ever let the foxes out to free roam. They can climb. Letting the foxes out would be quite irresponsible. Yeah. All right, ma'am. It's time. Oh, have you finally rested? Mm -hmm. She rests. <laughs> she's down. She's up. Nope, she's... Notes to make about tortoises. Really active, very stubborn. She's going to be nothing but trouble. Yeah, I can't wait for her to be over, well over 100 pounds. How big do they get? Is it 200 pounds? Uh... The really dense. I think really big ones could get that big, but I think, um... No, yeah, I don't know. They get the big. It's big. It's going to be big. She's going to be big. Some tortoises do like scratches. Maybe she'll be more comfortable when she's bigger. Yeah. Right now, when we scratch her, since she is so small, we're like... Would there be any threats for Push Pop her? free roaming other than perhaps cars? Um, losing her. Car yeah. I think she could very easily get under the fence. Yeah. Um and even if we had like a tracker or a cam on her and we could see that she was heading towards a fence, she could be under there and gone so fast. Like, I'll see how fast she is. Beep, beep, beep. Sorry. Do not completely tuck in there. Yeah, at this size, I would, I would definitely be potentially worried about some birds of prey. Thank you for the dono. Lose the lease on I'll guy you, but Valveus. I don't know. That's too Georgie. <laughs> um, Georgie. Uh. Tortoise, you're going to get grabbed by a coyote. Hello. How's it going? Uh, I'm behind by eight hours. Awesome. Love that. Goodbye. She didn't like it. All right, Push Pop, it's time. Goodbye. So Are we ready? Say goodbye, we have chat. To do a little lift, my friend. Whoop. Females can get up to 65 to 75 pounds and 20 to 24 inches. Do we know if she's a girl? I don't know if we've confirmed. We were told she's a girl. Might not be confirmed. The top of her enclosure should let sun in. <laughs> Bless, Bless you. you. 
All right, she is contained. Eat your hay, it's good for you. The push pop is contained. Polly. Full She's disclosure, blinking. chat, we have never. Painted with Polly. Never painted with Polly. So this could go any number of ways. She could be terrified to step in it. She could be like, no. So if the fence were good enough, she, could she be let out in the new giant enclosure? Yes. I think the plan is once the enclosure is done. Actually, I'm going to weigh her first. Uh, she's going to go out in it. That's what the concrete is for. Keep her in. We are not putting plastic over it for Polly. She's Should I put a towel there? She's stepping in it. Where's the fun in that? Okay. <laughs> then we wouldn't have to clean after. Are you ready? Can you come step on this, Kim? Very good. It's hard telling the gender 900. of birds and oh, wow. That's so good. reptiles and amphibians sometimes. Can you come over here? Very nice, thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't even think Polly's gonna notice. <laughs> Jeez. No? Don't try to eat this. Please. Patience. <laughs> what is that? Patience? Are you ready? Come on over. DNA test? Yeah, um, but I don't think we do... If we do a blood draw, we're gonna wait for, like, a need for a blood draw, so like physical. Um, we're not, I don't know, it's just easier. That way, there's also, usually there's not anything we need Good. to know their gender for. All right, I gotta take off. How are we feeling? Or just turn off. Terrified. This. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. You target? Good. Very good. Lindsay gonna come back? I don't know where Lindsay is. Target? Good. So this is where we see how comfortable Polly is with. <laughs> we paint. Good. And this might be how this goes today, Chad. This might be as comfortable as she is, just getting her used to the idea. It's really up to Polly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Can you come target? You can do it. You do it. Good. Target. Good. Good. Yeah. Target. You can just put it wherever. Where'd you go? Excuse you. Just a lot of walking around, doing poly work. You ready? No, don't. Can you? Mm. Yeah. Polly isn't with the other chickens because she is too small. Good. You check it? Good. That's very brave. Can you come over here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Come here. Very brave. 
Um, we are going to build her a separate enclosure that is adjacent to the chicken enclosure, uh, but right now she is the unofficial nut house mascot. Can you come over here? It's okay. Good, very brave. Very nice. Very good. Ready? Can you come over here? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Good. Good. Can do it. Good job. Very brave. Ready? Good. Good. Come over here. Good job. Very nice. Take one more step. Very nice. It's going to take a couple sessions, chat, but we got one footprint today. And we'll take it. Did so good. <laughs> it's beautiful. Princess Polly. All right, Miss Ma'am, would you like to eat your produce in front of chat? I'm sure they'd love that. She's a produce queen, chat. Epic modern art. Hold on, let's see. All right, Miss Ma'am, let me get you. This. It starts with one footprint, chat. It all starts with one. Look at the little prints on the floor of the nut house now. Look at them. <laughs> all right, hold on, chat. So tight. I gotta get her her water. Polly does follow us around and it is incredibly stressful. <laughs> Incredibly stressful, actually. Hey, man. There you go. There she goes. Okay. It's just the parrots, and we are done. Miss Ma'am, go and put this down so you have some water. Important. Stressful because you don't want to hit slash step on her. Stressful because she exists underneath our feet at all times. Uh, yes, we will be auctioning off the uh, paintings uh, for the art auction, the Earth Day art auction in April. I apologize for this. <laughs> Okay. Why is it stressful to have Polly follow you around? Because if you're not careful, you can hit a poly Ew, that she is always, always like this. I mean it. Her feathers are very soft.
She currently lives in the nut house because she's too small to live with the other chickens. She's too tiny. Do the rats ever get to run around the nut house? Every day. The chins get out, the rats get out, Push Pop gets out, Polly gets out. Polly's out most of the time. Um, she's got full reign whenever nobody else is out. She's cleaning her beak. She's feeking. <laughs> She's got too much style for the other chickens. Don't forget the premium prices the hexagon canvases brought during the summer camp. Uh, eventually, we will have to restock on canvases. We have not yet, so we have not purchased any new canvases literally for like two years. We're still trying to get through all of the ones we bought initially because we didn't know how long it would take to train everybody or how it would end up. Um, but once we need new ones, we'll remember. All right, chat. This concludes today's Keeper Talk stream. This is it. We have to go feed some parrots because Lindsay and I, that's the last thing we have to do today. We're going to go do a little session. So you guys feel free to tune in. Um, I can put you over on, um, is it night camps? Is cleaning her beak the same thing the macaws do and parrots do? I always see them wiping their beak on different surfaces. Yeah, it's a behavior called feeking. Feeking. They all clean their beaks. Uh, when you work with some birds, uh, they'll occasionally like use you to clean their beak. Like a lot of the birds of prey that we worked with would like clean their beaks um, on our hands or on our heads <laughs> um, from time to time. Uh, can be a sign of trust as well. But typically cleaning the beak is a natural behavior. So when you see it, it's good that you see it because it means they're doing natural things. Once again, thank you for the stream today. I needed it. I'm so glad that we were able to help in some small way. Take good care of yourself. Sending you to night cams. Right? Night cams. Everybody okay with that? You're famous, ma'am. <laughs>